All right, welcome to another episode of Catholic Mindset, where we create Catholic content for Catholics. Today we have Wadi Barreto. He and his wife, Jackie, are the coordinators and founders of the Miami community of Retrovi, which is a ministry for marriages to build is to intimacy. How are you, Wadi? Thank you for joining us on the show. I'm blessed, and thank you for being for allowing me to be here and, and address your uh, your community. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So we like to start with a prayer. Would you mind leading us in prayer, please? Absolutely. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Holy Father, for this glorious morning. Uh, morning that you allow us to enjoy in your presence. Thank you for the opportunity, Heavenly Father, to join in your name. You said that whenever two or more gather in your name, you're going to be among us. That whatever intentions we agree to pray upon a Heavenly Father in your name will be given to us. We ask for a downpour of the Holy Spirit. May every word we speak be guided by you to fulfill your will, to do your will. May you touch the hearts of everybody that is listening and the message that they need to be to convey. May be conveyed that they may receive it according to the way that you want to express it to them. May you be the center of our homes and of our life, guiding our path, leading us to heaven today and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Father, Son, Holy, Son Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'd like to start with a question here sure. in Catholic Mindset. And the question is, what does your heart desire the most? Mm, Jesus Christ. Uh, nothing, nothing I desire more by desiring Jesus Christ than I desire to build a great marriage. Therefore, I want to desire to build a great home. Therefore, I want to answer a call to holiness, to be the best version of myself and be able to, in his name, lead others into the same light of the eternal life in heaven. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's jump right in. What is Retrovi all about? Retrovi is a, is a ministry that, well, the Let's begin with what it means, retrovive. It sounds like ratatouille, right? <laughs> I get that. I, I get that a lot. Retrovive means rediscover, and it's a French word. It's a French word because the ministry um, started back in Quebec, Canada, French, um, uh, back in 1977. Rediscover, why? Because it focuses on communication. The focus, uh, the focus is, uh, is in communication. It's a three-part ministry. It's a three-part program, so it's not a retreat. Uh, there's a lot of great movements, a lot of great retreats, but this is not a retreat. It starts with a weekend in which the couples uh, are going are gonna to be, yes, isolated as a retreat. However, three couples and a priest are going to be teaching them a new way to communicate. So during that weekend, they're going to be working. They're going to be working a lot in, in, in learning and applying a new way to communicate. Um, the second part, which is the most important part, is called post sessions. The, the tool of communication that they learn on the weekend, they're going to apply it on the next six weeks. We're going to meet uh, every Sunday for six Sundays. We're going to spend about four hours together. And uh, we're going to use that tool to go, to go into the root of uh, topics like family of origin, um, values, ideals, personality, sexuality, uh, conflict management, different topics that are important to a strong marriages and tend to build sometimes division and problems within the, cop that w between the couple that don't know how to manage it. And the third part, which is also super important, is community. We meet once a month, and uh, we are our own support group. None of us are professional speakers. None of us, um, we are all volunteers. And what we share is uh, our own experiences and uh, the tools that we have received that have helped us um, to some of us save our marriages, to other of us just build a great marriage to lead our families. So can you dive deeper a little bit on the tools? What, what do they look like? What type of tools are we talking about? Okay. The, great, the greatest of all tool is a tool of dialoguing in which we uh, lead the people, the couples, by the hand and show them how to have a better understanding of one another in their emotions and their thoughts, how to express themselves properly, how to absorb it better, how to be able to connect in an intimate way to be able to know the self that we fell in love with in the other. So that way... The building that um, level of understanding, we stay away from those things that separates us because we are understanding one another. You mean dialogue, like conversation and, and 
listening to each other and understanding what we're saying. Yeah. The other tool that I think um, uh, it's, it's pinnacle important, it's uh, the community factor. Um, community factor because we connect with each other. We get to know one another. So we're able to lift each other up and at the same time having a community of people that we come to that we come that we come together we rejoice together but at the same time we can we continue to shape each other up to be able to build a great marriage and a great family and what would you say are some of the things that help couples build each other up for example faith i have to say most definitely having god uh, at the at the at the center respect it's a it's another one that most definitely helped the couples to be able to to com- to communicate the most important thing especially in marriage you know many times people uh people ask me what do you what is what is the most what is the most important thing in marriage people expect that the answer is going to be god and it is many people expect that the answer is going to be communication and it is. But the reality is that the most important thing is commitment. We make a promise when we enter into this covenant, right? I, I told my wife, Jackie, and I said, I, Wally, promise you, Jackie, to be faithful to you and to be by your side, by your side in health and sickness, for rich or for poor, better or worse, so help me God, right? Uh, I put no conditions to the promise. I didn't say, as long as you respect me. I didn't say as long as as you as you treat me well, as long as I'm happy. I never I never said that. I didn't even say as long as you're faithful to me. So that's a promise that I'm actually making to God. That I'm gonna lead my wife to heaven, and I'm gonna live for her. I'm gonna sacrifice uh, for her. When I commit to that promise, that I am not going to leave my wife regarding anything, then therefore. I have two options. If all of a sudden we're not understanding each other, I'm growing in frustration, and I am and I am suffering. I either live in misery the rest of my life, or I learn to be. I, I learn to be happy. I learn. I learn to find joy in that relationship. You know, we can't we can't enter into this covenant where we are exchanging lives and enter as one and remain one. We have to become. One, two, become one. That means that I have to change. I have to change a lot. I need to learn to live for the other. I need to learn to live for my wife. And and be Christ for her means to sacrifice for her, to put her needs before my needs. And that is something that the world doesn't teach us, especially nowadays. It's something that we need to learn. That's the greatest part where we need help. We need tools to be able to, to help one another, to be able to fulfill that part. But if we have the commitment straight and strong, we will be able to be molded and be able to, to reach it. If I have the commitment, I will find God because I'm going to need him. If I have, if I have the commitment, I will, I will learn to communicate because I, I'm going to start to understand that I need to change. A lot of things are going to happen, but it starts with a commitment. And that's the part that many times nowadays is lacked. So if I were to summarize what you're saying, so it's commitment to live for... My sin for my for my wife. The commitment to fulfill the promise. The okay. commitment to fulfill the promise is no matter what I won't leave. That's the that's the commitment. And I say, okay, I'm going through this, I have I'm frustrated at this, but I'm not leaving. I need to reinvent myself. And you will research and you will find help and you will seek help, you know, and you and you will seek God. And a lot of things will start, you'll start realizing, okay, I I need to I need to do a new approach, just like in business. No, people have a business and a career, all of a sudden you hit a rod. You realize you have hit a rod. In our business and in our careers, we know that we need to reinvent ourselves, and we do. It's the same in marriage. But in marriage, we have the tendency to think that our happiness or our joys should be based on the other one. And in reality, the joy is found in serving the other one, not oneself. So tell me about the process. What can I expect when I attend this retreat? Work. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of work. So, like I said, on, during the weekend, you have three couples and a priest that are gonna be that are gonna be presenting different topics uh, to the couples that are attending, and and basically, like I said, we're gonna be we're gonna be teaching them a new way of communication. 
So we're going to take them very slowly, step by step, to be able to learn this new technique or this new this new way to communicate. That is not it's not one that uh, that I learned in my entire in my entire life. So during the during the process, everything that they listen in the different talks, they're going to apply them on themselves. So sometimes. People are worried that, oh, I don't want to go there because I'm, I'm going to have to talk about the, the situations or problems in my home. No, not at all. Um, there's no communication, you know, between between you and, and, and anybody else, or any, uh, unless, you know, during breakfast, lunch, and dinners, and whatever you want to share with couples that you're in, in, you're in the table, you know, it's a, it's a very social part. Uh, but in terms of the actual practices, everything happens between the couple. So they learn to practice and have counseling at the same time because we're they are present to help them with if they get stuck with any of the techniques of any of the exercises we're there to help them because what we want to do is to is is to help them to be able to learn this this tool well this tool of communication well so they can build build new level of intimacies testimony i could give on my uh, on, on my own experience when jackie and i went um, to do our retro by weekend, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary and we dated for eight years. So I've been with my bride for 33 years at the time. I learned more about Jackie on that first weekend than the previous 33 years of our life because we were never brought, be brought into one another to be able to learn of different things that are so important in marriage, but nobody ever even guide us or lead us into even thinking about those things that are were so important do you feel like other couples experience the same feeling and experience oh yes oh yes you know we we receive couples from that that are in all different stages you know there's four stages in marriage the first one is the roman stage and everybody this is where we get married because we all feel love for one another and we feel the butterflies inside and we can't stop thinking about the other and we want to be with the other all the time and call them all the time. You know, this is where we get married, in the Roman stage. But from that Roman stage, once we get married, then comes the disillusionment stage. And we, we start seeing, well, Prince Charming is not so charming. You know, and he starts snoring in the middle of the night. And Princess Fiona, you know, uh, have have two sides to her too, you know. It's not it's not perfect. So this disillusionment starts happening. From this disillusionment stage, many times, unfortunately, because of lack of the tools of communication and the proper help, roll into misery, in which we grow in frustration because we can't convey the message. We want the other to come to, to, to become more like us or to understand me and doesn't understand and they start turning into fights. And before you know, we start building blocks. We start building walls between each be, between each other and we don't and, and, and we don't know what to do. This is unfortunately where many couples break. This is where the commitment really comes into play because it's part of marriage. And I'm gonna go to back 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 to that. Many don't get to the fourth stage the most important one, which is awakening. When we go back to the promise, and I said, okay, at this moment, I am not happy, but I made a promise. I'm going to stick my guns to it. I'm going to fulfill the promise. I'm going to seek help. You know, um, I said that that, that mystery says everybody's going to go through it, and I want to go back to that because it is part of marriage. Marriage is a sacrament, right? What does that mean? It's an instrument to receive grace an instrument of God to receive grace. So we experience grace not when things are going pretty. We experience grace in the cross. We experience grace in pain. When we are suffering, when we are with fear, when we're in anxiety, and we say, Lord, help my own belief. Come, my Lord, I need you. That's when he comes and fills with the peace that he, only God can give us. People will go through that misery stage, not because problems between the couple, but how about loss of income or a business crash? How about one of the parents of either have a lengthy sickness and they need to take care of those parents? How about one of the children have drug problems? You know, there are so many, so many things that we will face that cross. We will face that misery. Make no mistake of that. Now, the world is trying to portray that you get married and then it's happily ever after and that's, and that's what it's normal. 
And we see the pictures of everybody on Facebook because now everybody have a perfect life on Facebook. And we think that, that that is what it should be. That nobody should suffer in marriage. And the moment that we suffer, that means that we're not meant for one another. We need to break. No, we are meant for one another. God chose us to live for the other. My wife is my path to heaven, and I am hers. It's, you, the, you said the four stages of marriage. This is romance, disillusionment, I missed the number four. Misery. M misery. And awaken, the most important one. Is it possible for, I guess, dating, dating couples who have been dating for a while to experience a little bit of this? Yeah. Before, yeah. before they get married? <laughs> Yes, because you mentioned you've been dating for eight years. So I don't. Yes. So I don't. I don't know. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. You know, it, it is. It's funny. It's funny you say that because you know it's it's like these these Hallmark movies. Uh, I tell my kids nowadays. Oh, I love I, I love to watch Hallmark movies. Says, you that you? No, no way. I said, why not? Well, because it, because it's always the same. It's always it's always so predictable. And I said, really. Especially my oldest son, who's married, he's been married for seven years, have two beautiful daughters with his wife, Erica. And, and I tell them, really, every couple have a Hallmark movie, a, a Hallmark movie story. Really? And I said, yeah, because you fall in love with one another and everything is so peachy. And then all of a sudden, there's a struggle. And we overcome the struggle. And we realize that we need each other. We fall in, we truly fall in love, and we go into the altar and make the promise that exchange our vows. The problem is, in whole, the only problem in the whole movies is that it ends on that in that moment, and that moment the real story truly begins. The real story of salvation and redemption, of true joy, found in the fulfillment of the promise, stopped too early. That's when it really and truly begins so there will there will be some elements you see dating time is thinking time it's not emotion time even though there's got to be an emotion for the other no doubt about no doubt about that this is a time where we decide if this is the person that i'm willing to die for it's not someone that i that i want to live with is someone that i cannot live without it's very different what are the values that I carry that are non-negotiable are those values found in the other. Because once I make the promise, it's unbreakable. I'm coming to God and I'm making a promise to God. I'm, the promise I make to Jack is not to Jack, it's to God. I'm saying, this daughter of yours that you love so much that you died for her, I am going to walk her back into your loving arms for the rest of my life. So that means that she has to have everything that I'm willing to die for. Right and the uh, and the same the other way around. So God, so God will give us the opportunity during that process to make the decision. All all the different facts are gonna come out. No doubt about that. But during that process, in the way that things are handled, is that we are going to make a decision. You know, if we're going to enter into the awakening stage, the problem is that we want everything to be so romantic that we don't bring our brain into the equation to make the proper calculation. Mm. It's like going into construction without creating a budget to make sure that I have what it takes to be able to finish the project. I like that. I mean, you mentioned, I liked what you said, dating time is thinking time. You are discerning this per person to be your companion, your person that will help you through life, raise your kids with, mm -hmm. so many, so many things, so many, go through ups and downs, right? So what are you getting into? So you got to really think about who you're dating and what is that long-term impact to you and your family and to your children? Yeah, no, no doubt about it. You know, so many, so many times you, you hear, oh, you know, he have a, he have a temper and he's, and he's very jealous and he even drink a lot. Oh, you have beautiful eyes. And I'm in love with those eyes. Think about what you just said. You know, stop. Uh, have you mentioned about that you have an issue with the drinking? Have you mentioned that you have an issue with the temper, temperament? Have you expressed your need to be trusted? These things need to be addressed beforehand. Because if he's not going to stop drinking, that means he's choosing the bottle before you. You're a wake up. If he's choosing not to control his temper, as you are trying to become one that temper, it's going to get worse. 
So think about that. You know, his thinking time is really one of the things. You know, what are, what are those things that presses buttons that really annoys me beforehand is the other one willing to make adjustments. This is the time. If it's not willing to make adjustments at the time, what are your, view, what are your views about, uh, uh, about building a family? I don't want to uh, I don't want to have children. Ooh, mm. really think about that one. Really think, oh, what's the purpose of marriage? I mean, why this union? And I want to die for this other one, male or female, don't want to bring forth life that will perpetrate our union for the future. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the pinnacle of this union, is not to get together to travel the world in a selfish way because I want to be happy. The purpose should be I want to become one. And that uh, the unity of our love it be passed on for centuries. How does that happen? Generations. We are going to create a generation that will create generation. But the brokenness of so many broken dreams and broken promises is creating anxiety in this new generation to make that promise. And they are truly missing out on the best way to live. Because there's no greater way to live than the married life when lived properly. You know, Jack and I lead Retrovi, and I mentioned to you, we, we had a, a private audience with Pope Francis on November 6th of, of, of 2021. Why was that? Because we have a perfect marriage that we were all beautifully, like in Hallmark movies? No, because I've been living outside my home two times, because I've been at the point of breaking with my wife. I know misery. My wife knows misery. Our children have witnessed us breaking through and by the grace of God overcome and build something that is worth following. So our children are following on our steps because they want to have the life that we have built for them. That's a process. And, and that example is, is priceless. Being able to, as a child, see your parents go through the ups and downs and make it through and, and see what's important in their lives. God, marriage, the promise, mm -hmm. the commitment, which is a great example of marriage. Sometimes people don't even think about, about, about that, the impact of our children and that they are watching. But I remember when our oldest son was going to get married, like I said, seven years ago, he came and told Jackie and I that him and his, and his bride wanted to get married. And I sat them down and gave him the whole talk about what I just said. You know, you really thought about this because it's for a lifetime. This is not a game. Once you enter into this arena, the promise that you're making to God, you cannot make a promise to God and break it. So that's why a man will leave his mother and father, join to his wife, the two shall become one flesh, and what God has bind together, no man can separate. You cannot bring forth a new life and cut it in half and remain alive. If you cut a life in half, there's death, period. So are you ready for that commitment? Before you take that step, I want the two of you to look for one couple that have been married for no less, no less, not one day less than 20 years. Look for that couple that have the relationship that you want to have 20 plus years in the future and get close to them and ask them because only someone that have what you want can teach you how to get it. I guarantee you that that couple is going to tell you they have got at the center, but don't take my word for it. Just go and interview them. Tell them, how do you have this beautiful marriage? Um, our son <coughs> scoffed. And I was like, what? Yeah, I'm not joking. And then he looked at his bride, and she scoffed too. And I said... You mean like a cough? Yeah, like, 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 like smirk. A, oh, okay. Oh, like a okay, smirk. Okay, you know, okay, okay. it is like, what, what's so funny? You know, I got angry. I felt disrespected. And he said, no, that way, wait. We don't mean no disrespect. It's just that we already did that. I, and I was surprised, you know, that this young couple will have such wisdom to do that. He said, we already talked about that. It's you. It's you, Mom. That couple that we're going to follow. Remember, this is my oldest son. He's the one that's seen the worst of us. And he's telling me and his bride that what they want to be 20 years down the road is us. Awesome. That's powerful. You know, I can't stress the importance of your marriage. I come from a broken home. 
my parents divorced when I was nine, and my life has been extremely difficult and painful. For my son to say that, now see the family that they're building where crisis at the center, the way they are leading our two granddaughters, is nothing short but phenomenal. It's all for the glory of God. I mean, I have to say that first, you know, congratulations, because it is it is hard, even for me. Like, I grew up Catholic. I was blessed with, with great parents, and, and they're still together. And, and um, you don't see a lot of people that go through their ups and downs, and they just work through them and commit and they just divorce is so it's like oh it's like i feel like sometimes people get married as and they have that as a tool yeah and it's like oh if it doesn't work out just get a divorce yeah, you know? but yeah. and um so talking about that things that you've talked about i feel like i want to ask you you know what are the rules of a man and a woman in, in a marriage especially nowadays you know we're being attacked left and right huh. marriage is being attacked left and right it's confusion gender issues <laughs> So what are the roles of a man and a woman in a relationship? Oh, uh, what, a, what, what, a, what a great question. It's, it's one that, I, that I've been pondering a lot for the, last, for the last few years. I think the answer is found in the Holy Trinity. True and true, we, we are the image of the Holy Trinity in this world as a married couple, as a family. You see, there's a Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Father leads the son and the son is obedient to the father and in between is the love between the two is the connection right the holy spirit here as a father my role as a man is to be jesus for my family jesus is the head of the church and i'm called to be the head of my household jesus gave his life for the church I am called to fulfill all the needs of my wife first, physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, all of them. The woman, in my eyes, is the essence of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit that communicates the needs of my family. Then as a servant that I am to my wife, because she's telling me the needs of my children, I will go and serve the needs of my, of my children. Therefore, because I am fulfilling all of their needs, they trust me. They trust that I will die before I hurt them. And therefore, they follow me because they trust me. So I am called to be Jesus for them so they can follow me because my role is to lead them into heaven. But the only way that I will be able to, will to, to lead them is not by force them, is not to will it over, is not to be a boss over them, is to be a servant of them so they trust that I want nothing but what is best and they don't question anymore because they know that I want the best and that's the way that I will lead them back into my loving Father who is expecting us all. So the, 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 the role of the woman is to be the stronghold of the, of the man, to communicate. The, my wife... It's my personal trainer. You know, she, oh, she puts resistance if I'm wrong. She points me to what is right, and I listen, and when I, fa and, and, and when I act upon, I become a best person for myself. At the same time, she's called to be supportive of my decisions once I have proved to be trustworthy. She tells my kids, your father said, and therefore we will follow because your father knows better. And the children at the same time start learning to become obedient to the two. So the marriage is the first, is the, it, 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 it's the base of society and, and, and is the head of everything. The husband and the wife have to be in unity and synchrony. That's why retrovites become so important because it strengthens the unity between the two that the, and the two of them are pointing towards heaven because God is at the center. And the children start learning the first line of structure at the home. You know, if you, if you strengthen the homes, then the homes feed the church, the church feed the culture, and the culture feeds the world. The only people talk all, all the time about the chaos in the world, and it's all because the dissolving of so many families. So we need to go back to the roots and strengthen families. Understanding our roles help us to fulfill that role in a way that others here to say, I love, I love the joy in your home. When there is structure, 
and there are consequences when 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 things are not done according to what is right uh, in the eyes of the family, which is what is right in the eyes of God in our in, in our case, and we can be able to share that with others, so others can follow on the same path. I like what you said about um, the families and and how they're in essence the the foundation of our community, our culture, you mm -hmm. know, our society, and I like to say this something similar. To my friends and when we talk about politics and stuff at the end of the day we can talk politics all you want we can talk about the problems Absolutely. we can throw money at all the problems all, you, all the you money know, you want but everything that we're dealing with now in society are symptoms of a broken home absolutely of a lack of god in the house absolutely of lack of the family structure so everything we're seeing are symptoms of that absolutely you know that's why we feel so honored we know that we are so not qualified but yet blessed that God have called us to be at the forefront of the battle, the spiritual battle. This is the way to save the world from damnation. And we have to not be afraid. Not be afraid to enter into the covenant of marriage. Um, not to be afraid for the future. We know who wins at the end. Open the book of Revelation, read through it, and be at peace. But this is a, but this is the defining moment in history. And... Uh, You can throw all the money that you want, just like you said, in advertisement and anything that you want to what is right and what is wrong. But at the end, of the, uh, the, the reality is the way that we're going to turn the world back into the light of Jesus Christ is one family at a time. You know, one fa Jesus picked 12. That's the structure of the church that have become universal, right? You don't need a lot, but you need solid. Because the way that they started loving one another, others started coming to their synergy of the circle of love. They will know you're my disciples by the way that you love one another. This is the domestic church. We need to love each other passionately, live for the other passionately. In that process in which we live for the other one, we will start creating this light around us because we will start finding true joy is found in serving the other, not serving oneself. The more that I try to serve myself, the more I isolate myself. If I'm going like this and Jackie's going like this, we're going like that. But the moment that I'm going to her and she's coming to me, we're coming like this. We're embracing. We're becoming one. Right? And the more that we, the more that we do that, we fill our hearts with joy. It is the joy of the love of Christ that is at the center of our, unity, of, of our union. Everybody that is around us, look at that and they want it. What are we going to tell them? Exactly what we're sharing here. And then they turn around and spread it to others. And that's where we are right now. Being in retro is the greatest blessing of our life. Why? Because we receive the tools first to build the marriage that we have now. Now we have the opportunity to pass it on to others. And we are seeing, we, we have couples that have come divorced already. You know, oh, but they want to give a chance To their, to their relationship. I, re, I, rem I remember a friend of mine, you know, we were talking about Emmaus because he wanted, wanted to have God and we started talking about him. And then I explained to him about my experience at Emmaus, catapulted me, shut me up to Retrovi and what the tools of Retrovi have done in, in, in marriage. And, and he looked down and he said, too bad that it's too late for me. I, I, I look up, I know that was the Holy Spirit. I look up, I got really close to his face and I said, it is never too late. I'm not like that, you know, it is never too late. And and he said, but you don't understand, we've been divorced for two years and I, and I scoffed now. I'm the one with the spirit said, you, you, you think you are divorced because you signed a paper in, a court, in the court of law of men? Listen, listen brother, the promise that you make to God Kind of break it. You know, most couples divorce not because they don't love one another, but because they don't understand each other and the frustration is so great that they are living in misery and they want to stop the pain. I get that. But to be able to heal that, we need tools, we need God, and we need community. And Retrovi, saw, and Retrovi offers all that. They did came to the program Retrovi three years ago. They are still married. They're coming back to renew their vows and placing God at the center. That's only one example of so many. We have seen things that not, in, not even in telenovelas you can see, you know, of, you put, of you, pain you and put, suffering. You put the telenovelas to shame. Yeah. <laughs> good. True good. and true. You know, and, and 
they have put the, of course, they have put the work and used the tools because there's no magic trick. It's not an inspiration. All of a sudden, you're healing. No, it's not like that. They have put the tools. They have put the work, and they have rebuilt from the ground up a great marriage. We have other other couples that comes. Like they serve the, their parishes a lot, you know, and they are good couples. They have God at the center, but still, they don't. They 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 know that they can be better, but they don't know how to. And they come because they want a better marriage. And the same, they apply all the tools, which is it's a lot better for couples that come, you know, because they want to improve their marriage and have a better marriage because they have the openness of heart. You know, part of the process in in, in marriage is, is, is to understand that love is not a feeling. Love is a decision that we make every day. You know, like, like we were talking before, going, going into marriage, you need to bring your thoughts, right? Mm. It's the same every day. You know, not every day I feel great and fussy with my kids, but I'm not going to abandon them because they misbehave, right? Exactly with my wife. So love, we need to make the decision to love. We need to make the decision to forgive because it is a decision that we make and we need to make the decision to trust. So we need to build up, we'll build each other up to be able to make those decisions. When we have normal you know, frustrations and communications. We are not at a deep stage of misery. We haven't hurt each other to the point of bleeding. It's easier to make these decisions. So they come with with eagerness to put the work, and there's no fear of making those decisions, especially if they're getting the help. But when couples wait to be so broken, you know, they wait so long to make those three decisions. It's harder. Possible, yeah. We see, it, we see, it, we see it all the time. Every time we have a retrofit weekend, there are couples like that, and many of them becomes miracles. But it seems like miracles. So it's just, but it's, but it's just work, uh, right? So no marriage is beyond hope. I know that for a fact. It takes grace, humility, and work. A lot of work. But when we work. Convinced that we're going to fulfill our promise because that's at the core of everything. God will give us the grace and the community, help us up to continue moving forward. And eventually, there's nothing but amazing stories of success in marriage. Last night, I'm sorry, but last night we have a regular monthly meeting. We have 30 couples, 60 people. They're on a regular monthly meeting. All of them have a story, and we know all those stories, and we love them very, very, very much. All of them. We're so proud of them, what they what they have become. So we know for a fact that no marriage is beyond hope. I want to ask you. You mentioned the, kid, the community. I get, I get God, of course, prayer, God. I get communication to understand each other. Mm-hmm. I kind of understand community. Can you dive deeper a little bit in yeah, how you, community plays a part? Absolutely. You gotta, you know, the people around us shape us you know if you are all the time with people that are looking for a single life the marriage singles lifestyle you know i want to continue bowling and i want to continue doing my my own thing is pulling you apart but when you are surrounded we are social beings we got we, we we got we gotta live with others right when you are surrounded with others couples that believe in marriage that are working in their marriage that God have in the center. What do you think the communications around you are going to be? Are going to be lifting you up? Are going to be pushing you to togetherness and not for separation? And is and it going to be a stronghold helping you out to look in the right direction when things are not going necessarily your way? Jack and I cannot do it alone. I guarantee you that. Praise be to God for we are surrounded by couples that are strong couples that have worked and continue to work just like us to improve their marriages every day and keeping God at the center, that keeps us focused. Our our desire is to build a community that is the size of Miami, that every married couple in Miami is part of us and we are part of them because that's going to continue to push us all the way to heaven and God intended through marriage. That's wonderful. I guess, it, yeah, it makes, it makes oh, let me start again. I got it. So you support each other. Yes, and I'm sure you Big guys time. can bounce ideas. You can be like, I did this. Yes, I, yes I've do. been where you are, but this is what I did, and this is what I recommend. Yep. Okay, wonderful. So where should a couple be before they can consider going to retrovi? Married, period, married. You know, even our youngest, uh, it's, he's getting married this year in December, uh, and his pride is uh, 
oldest daughter of our secretary couple from Retrovi. They live seven houses from us. They live seven houses from us, and we met in Retrovi. We didn't meet in our community, and uh, they they are getting married. And uh, they are already planning out after their marriage where they're coming to Retrovi because they have seen what the tools of communication uh, have done for us. So retrovise the university of marriage, the way that I the way that I call it. Every every marriage needs to be able to communicate effectively, to build a proper intimacy and become unbreakable. So as long as a couple as a couple is married and committed, they, they every everybody everybody needs it. You know the way that I that I see it is, if you want to learn how to build a marriage from the ground up because you're nearly married, come to retrovai. If you have if you have a great marriage, but you think that you can have a better marriage, and I believe we can all improve constantly, then I encourage you to come to Retrovi. If you are if you are in pain, this moment, and you're suffering, and you think that the only solution is divorce, and you're considering divorce, please don't divorce. Come to Retrovi. Every couple need this. This should be, I call it the University of Marriage for a reason. This should be at the base, it should be almost a requirement for all of us getting married to commit, to get all this, all these tools before marriage. And then after that, continue on using so many other great programs, you know, great movements like, you know, the Covenant, Matrimonio San Victoria. There are so many others, great retreats to continue on. But at the heart and at the base, on every Marriage should be the toolbox of Retrovi. And Retrovi, when I, when we, you and I first met and I went to your website, Retrovi is everywhere. Yeah. Right? You guys are all over the world. Yes, yes, yes. We just hosted the, the International Council for the World. We have we had over 27 countries represented here, over 80 communities from different parts of the world. So, I mean, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter where, where you live. There's a, there's a city, a state, or a country that have a retrovite weekend, a retrovite program all together coming up in your language. Because from Africa to South to South America, uh, it's it's everywhere. And here in the United States, so I mean we are we are now currently in Miami. So of course you could you could look for your local retrovi um, group, you know, or mission. But in the United States, can we say that in the, at least in the major cities there's yes. retrovi? So that's okay. Yes, yes, definitely. You know, if if if, if you wanna if you wanna find out what will be your 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 nearest uh, community of retrovi, I encourage you to go to our website. You know, www.helpourmarriage.org. When you go there, you go to communities. You're gonna be able to see uh, all the different communities in the United States. Uh, you're gonna be able to see the upcoming weekends. In, in those in those cities, you can look by date and you can look by region and area. I encourage you to look first anything anything closer to home. So when you go through through the program, ideally right there and then you join the community. Um, we love our community passionately, and to have a community is really a game a, a game changer. On the, if you have any questions, you can also call the toll-free number, and the closest community to you, based on your area code, is going to answer the phone, and it's going to answer all your questions, and it's going to give you support. That's what we're here for. So I think that we talked about your experience through Retrovi and how we can find it and everything, who should be going, but I, I haven't asked you, how did you encounter Retrovi in the first place? <laughs> you know, um, it's funny. Jack, Jackie and I... Well, after overcoming the worst of us, I cut it out by the grace of God, we, we didn't have retrovi. Nobody told us about it. So by the grace of God, we have a better marriage now. We're happy uh, or happier, much happier than we were, in the, we were in the past. And we wanted to give back, right? And we were looking for what to do with marriages. Our parish at the time didn't have anything for marriages. There was no movement. There was nothing. We were trying to kind of, through a mayor's, put together the two groups. It was not really working. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm listening to this um, uh, radio podcast, um, and uh, Father Rocky is talking about this ministry called Retro that have helped hundreds and thousands of marriages around the world. 
and it's called retroviral ratatouille. And I, I remember being in the Palmetto, I, I pulled aside to write this complicated word because the, back then the website, um, this is 20, 2015, the website was retrovi.org before I can figure out how to, how to spell that you know I pull aside on the palmetto <laughs> and I start I start looking and I found the website and I said okay when I go back to my office I'm gonna call these people I was on my way to serve my car service my car I'm gonna call these people to see how can I bring this to my parish when I got um, to the to the dealer to the dealership the service advisor is a close friend a male's brother his name is Mario he's in heaven Mario, he gave me a big bear hug, and he said, my brother, I've been thinking a lot about you. And I said, really, why? He said, my wife and I are involved in a marriage ministry uh, that we want to bring to the Archdiocese of Miami, and I know that the one that God is calling is you. And I said, what are you talking about? What ministry is that? And he's a retrovite. I started shaking I pulled my phone uh, to show him, you know, like I can't, you know, I can't believe this. This is, this, this is amazing. This is God at his best, you know. So I showed him that I was looking for information. He explained to me the three parts of Retro, and I said, well, so when is the next weekend? There was nothing in Miami. It was in Orlando. And he said, this was a Tuesday. He said, this Friday. And I called Jackie, and I told her all excited, oh, we're going to save the world. Jackie was saying, no, we're going to improve our marriage. Jackie said immediately, yeah. <laughs> in, in, in my little mind, I, I, I thought that we, we have the best marriage that we could have. I was so wrong. There was so much to improve. So we jumped in the car, and we went to Orlando, and, and, and we went through the program. And as we received all these tools, like I said, I, I, I learned more about my wife in that little weekend than all the previous, you know, 30 plus years that I've been with her. I said, how, and, and then he said, you have to go through the whole program, not just the weekend, go through the post session. So we did, we come into the whole thing. And every single Sunday, every single post session that we were going through the different topics, we learned more and more and more. And we're saying, you know, Miami needs this. The world needs this. You know, I remember on our weekend, somebody said a joke that I didn't thought it was funny. They said that Retrovi was the best kept secret of the Catholic Church. I was, I, I took it like, that's not funny. It's not funny at all. You know, Jack and I were in the birch of divorce two times and nobody told us about this. Mm. This could have saved our marriage by the grace of God. And only by the grace of God, we were married. But we're so close to divorce. We put ourselves through so much pain for so long, years of pain, clinging, thank God, to the promise that we made, to the to to to, to the um, commit to commitment that we did. We're committed to fulfill it, but so much pain during all that process. We would have saved our family so much pain if somebody told us about that. So we we commit right there and then. Not only are we going to bring it to Miami, that we were going to let the world know about the existence of this ministry of this program for marriages so nobody have to endure what i endure as i was growing up from a broken home so that's how we came to be amazing no amazing i mean it's it's wonderful to oh, see and by, and by, and by the way it's funny we, we did our week in april 2015 little we knew that on september of 2016 jackie and i were going to be receiving the blessing of Archbishop Wensky as the new coordinators of the new community of Retrovi Miami when there was no community. We started the community basically from the ground up. There was really a couple of couples, Victor and Carmen, God bless them. They were and are our deputy coordinators, our, our right hand, and only a couple more couples. That was it. There was, there was no community, but we trusted. We trusted God that this was going to happen. Now we have a strong vibrant community that is shedding light in the world amazing again i mean this is this is amazing it's great to see that when that there's these tools out there for yep. for us as catholics or for any marriage i'm sure that want to try to do something and um you know now that you mentioned for us catholic i would like to make a sign note of that as good catholics that we are we welcome everybody mm. we we don't care if you're jewish we don't care if you're a Protestant. We don't care if you don't believe in God. You know, we want to help marriages. We want to help couples to be able to um, understand each other and save the structure of a family. 
and and funny enough, it's, it's not uncommon. Actually, it have become almost expected nowadays. The greatest conversions that we have seen have seen in retro have been in retro life. Couples that have come just seeking to learn how to communicate, and that's what we teach them. But I guess they see the light of God in us. They start seeking for it. Wonderful. Wadi, this has been a wonderful conversation about uh, saving marriages and helping marriages and all your stages that you said who can attend. You said you're married now. Um, let me ask you, let me ask you one more question. What is your favorite part of your faith? The presence. The presence of God, especially in the Eucharist, where I can enter into communion with Him. Where I can be one with Him, He can be one with me, unmold me. Um, I used to I used to hate God for a long period of time because of the words of my parents and the suffering. I turned against Him. And it's through repenting and the Eucharist that the heart of stone I had, He turned into flesh. And uh, of course I love all the sacraments to be able to reconcile by going to my Father in Christ's persona in the in 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 the priest and tell him that I was sorry even though I know he was there. But I can look into his eyes and say it and be able to embrace him and receive that forgiveness. The baptism where I receive the Holy Spirit, the anointing of my confirmation. And especially the grace I have received in marriage where I have become a new man that I have learned to be Christ for my wife and for my children and continue to learn to be so for my community. Just like the priesthood and marriage, you know, I think the pinnacles of, uh, of the sacraments that by our yes is going to be life-defining. Fulfilling my promise to Jackie will welcome him to heaven. And the same for Jackie. And the priest, the promise that he, that he made to God to tend to his flock, by fulfilling that, he will be welcomed to the loving arms of our Father. Why? Because the covenant is, if you fulfill that, you're coming home. And I said, in the process, I'm going to need you to give me the grace. And so he does. And the greatest instrument of grace, like I said before, in my favorite part of my Catholicism is the presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, taking the time to share your story and all about the, the ministry that you're doing. This is amazing to have... Um, Retrovi in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's shared with love. Tremendous uh, amount of love and passion that we have for Christ and for all the amazing couples he has brought into our life that are enriching us so much. And they themselves nowadays are turning around, seeking and inviting all other couples that want to be surrounded by amazing couples that are filled with the grace of God to come and see.